Hey Magic Community on YouTube, T1 Glistener Elf, here with T1 Star- Oh, I'll let you say your name. T1 Star for She got it! And she and I, this is actually a re-record. Uh, I'm not playing the game, this has already been played, and I played it with her, but when I was editing another video, I accidentally deleted that video, that recording, so she and I are doing it again. And that means no distraction. I don't have to. I don't have to focus on the game. That's going to be a good thing. All right. So really quickly, I'm going to pull up my opponent's deck, and it is. It says Narset City Vault. It's actually Karn City Vault. So because as you can see, no Narsets. This is the. Uh, I, I don't know. This this is a Karn deck. So goes against Time Vault and Voltaic Key in the sideboard. And there you go. What are you going to do? Alright, so as for me, now you're going to notice something a little, in, this is seated. My opponent and I, uh, unfortunately we team paired against each other. It, it couldn't be helped. My opponent and I had to, you know, I, he was fourth seed, I was fifth seed. Uh, that said, uh, well, I don't think you see it in chat. Colgate's actually going to take the draw here. Uh, this was established previously, so don't worry, this isn't, you know, this, we chatted with each other about it earlier. But yeah, I'm about to, so Colgate says keep. I'm going to start taking my turn here, and ta-da! And uh, I, I already know how this goes, unfortunately. Uh, there's not going to be a lot of suspense for me. Uh, but And this is played at twice the speed, uh, which is good for her, and I think is good for you. Uh, I do a lot of deliberation when I play in front of the camera. Not, not just in front of the camera, because I don't do it in paper. In paper I play at, the, at my normal speed, but Online, when I actually can talk about my plays and talk people through my thought process, I play more slowly. And may, some people appreciate that watching my videos, but obviously some people don't. Well, in this case, I can do both. I don't have to worry about focusing on the play, and, you know, I've got... I can tell you what I'm on about. Alright, so Colgate bottomed that card, uh, has drawn, and the first turn from shops. <laughs> Suffice it to say, I will be glad that I did what I did. Oh, and you have your lei, your Hawaiian necklace. So Mox Opal into... Can I have this get over? Oh, are you how that got over? <laughs> are no, you the one that I, did that? I did, but yeah. I got it through the hole. Oh, so Colgate's saying cast that. Fair enough, I, I guess. I got it the uh, So I'm the blue deck. The onus is on me to actually respond. And that's another reason why it's being sped up. Uh, that right there took entirely too long. I'm sorry about that. But I'm a blue deck, so, you know, gotta do it. And I'm now pulling up my deck in the meantime. So we're seeing a Chalice on zero, Academy, Walking Blist on one. Now Mox can actually be used. And this is fun, folks. This is fun. Now, you don't see a counter on Chalice to say that it's ch zero. It is zero, though. <laughs> what are you doing over there? I'm working here. I'm working here. <laughs> All right. So yeah, Ballista is a problem, and there's an Ink Moth Nexus down there. Uh, there is a Ballista is almost a hard counter to this deck. Like I'm, I'm only slightly exaggerating. There are a few outs that we have. We have No Rod in the sideboard, which next season is probably going in the main board. We have Fatal Push, which would have been No Rod, but Lavinia I expected to be more of a card. It was not, unfortunately, but you know that's that's the reasoning. Lavinia also kind of shuts this deck down to a large extent. Can you let me talk, please? Hey, shushy, shushy, shush, shushy, shushy, shush. Don't make me do the tickle fingers. I'll do the tickle fingers. All right, so no blocks. I, I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm trying to bait out the ping with Walking Blista, uh, because I can do the math here. My opponent has Mox Opal, Talarian Academy. They can put an extra counter on, and I'm trying to make sure that Colgate, as best I can, doesn't see that. It doesn't work out, unfortunately. Um, we get to actually see the Blista stay. It can swing. It can put another counter, and once it gets that second counter, it's basically game. Like, I have to go on one of the deck's backup win conditions in order to have a chance. Which means, I told you I was going to. I told you I was going to. <laughs> uh, which means I'm either on Tinker or I'm on Show and Tell. It, it's, it's a problem, but... <laughs> I think you're on Tinker. That's, that's probably right, since there's a Mox Ruby there. I think you're right. If I could find Tinker, that would be better. They're both one ofs, so... You know, it's it's whichever comes first, but also if I find show and tell, I need to also find a creature because 
If I had the other half of that combo, if I had Progenitus instead of Blazing Shoal, we'd be in okay shape. But since I didn't, I don't... Eh, it's not a good thing. So, moving on, my opponent swung for one, I'm taking one, or actually I'm saying no effects, or no blocks, or something like that first. I told you I was gonna tickle you! If you sing, if you sing, I'm gonna tickle. I might ununfortu uh, unfortunately incentivize more, though. She's wanting to do it. Okay. Alright, so now, now that we've gone to combat after tap. It's alright, it's, it's casual, it's out of order, who cares? Uh, while I'm oh, okay, okay, okay. So I'm blocking here, it's pumped, and it's shooting. <coughs> it's shooting nothing. Okay, this is pinky off, good off. I it's see. Because your hands was, were washed earlier. Okay, so I said okay, and it looks like they they didn't ping, they just took it, and you know, now there's a wasteland. Uh oh. And now they s sort of knocked me off blue and black mana. My opponent doesn't know I have island fetch in hand. Uh, you know what? There's another thing that should be noted. <laughs> Yeah, now she's doing it on purpose. You want to be tickled, don't you? No, I don't. No, you don't? Well, then don't do that. You see the black lotus in hand? <laughs> the black lotus probably needed to be played earlier. Uh, there was a reason. I think that I remember it being... It was something about holding more cards in hand. Since I didn't need the black lotus for anything... Hey, please, 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 Evangeline, please. Please. Please, okay? I'm trying... Since I didn't need the Black Lotus for anything, I was holding it, you know, I didn't need the mana. I was holding it in my hand to make it look as if I had another card to make Force of Will more likely, or Blazing Shell Progenitus. Um, it doesn't, it still doesn't matter throughout this game, unfortunately. I can't think of anything for which it matters. Um, it would let me hard cast Blazing Shell, but that's, that's not a thing. A mental Misstep and Force of Will sh both showed up entirely too late. Uh, we are unfortunately kind of done this game. Now, okay, okay. I guess, I guess Black Lotus would get me two spells on a Trinisphere turn. That's that's fair. That's a thing. Now she and I are playing a game. It's called she has control of my hands. All right, so with no blocks. And that kind of, I uh, I'm just swinging for one, and my opponent is being absolutely patient. <laughs> All right. Passing right along. Mm hmm. It's a soup drink that cuts my dad. She's punching. <laughs> <laughs> punching the air. <laughs> it's on the other side. Oh, oh, we got your nose. <laughs> to the other side. Like we're exercising. I'm exercising her <laughs> arms. Alright, so lots of mana here. <laughs> so, uh, tapped Academy. Modify the counters on Blista. In other words, added a counter. I'm and there's Phyrexian Revoker. Now, gee, I wonder what that's going to name. So I think at this point I kind of have to go uh, fetch. I told you. If you sing, I'm going to tickle you. If you sing, I'm going to tickle you. So fetch Force of Will, and I have to actually fetch because I need all three for Trinisphere. Pitch Mental Misstep, because if that shuts down my Mox Ruby, I can't cast any more spells. Oh god, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, seriously, you're, you're, you're moving stuff over here with your foot. That's not good. Okay, I, I need you to stop. Let's focus. Take a deep breath. Ready? No, no, no. Deep breath. Deep breath, Evangeline. Good, and because of that, I'm moving on to game two. At this point, it's kind of done. Once the wasteland hits my land, and I can't play anything else, and I didn't draw into another, and even if I draw into Mox, Chalice cuts it off, we're done. Now, because this is a best of five, we're playing Worlds format, which means the first two games are going to be main board games. So I'm down a game, unfortunately. Uh, that means, Evangeline, that I'm not winning right now. It means I'm losing right now. But we're on the play. And we get to, let's see, I count three lands, one of which is Ink Moth Nexus, Blazing Shoal, Ponder. Now, Ponder to find Progenitus, or Blasphemous Act, would just be a turn two kill, if my opponent lets me. Um, we can also go, you know, Emerald. <laughs> you know, we could uh, 
th uh, we could ponder first and try to go for. Oh, oh, oh! I see what happened. So, you have hotkeys in this. If you type, if you're not in chat and you press a button, it does something. Uh, I was trying to type, not realizing that I was not in chat, and so I ended up doing something. I fixed it because I was trying to type keep. I hit K E E P, and E is in the turn. I, I don't remember what the other two did, but I ended up fixing it. So, oh, uh, oh, I see, I see. So I, one of those moved a card from the top of my deck. Oh yeah, yeah, P sent it to a face down pile. So I accidentally put the top card of my deck and exiled it face down. So my, I put it back on top and shuffled it, and we're all good. You touching it? Yeah. So I'm threatening the turn two kill. I have Mox Ink Moth Nexus. There's a Thorn of Amethyst, which is a thing. It's gonna make Ponder a little more expensive. Yes. Why was your thing moving without you touching it? Oh, because like I said, we can use hotkeys. I don't have to do everything with the mouse. Alright, so we're seeing a Phyrexian Revoker. Uh, apparently... Oh, no, no, I see, Sue. So the turn's still going. Okay, because Thorn only applies to non-creatures, and Phyrexian Revoker's a creature. Now, can I do anything here? Yes. What can I do? I can Force of Will uh, Pitching Ponder. Uh, this, is a, this is a decision for me. I didn't do it on the Thorn, although, to be fair, the deck can play around Thorn. Uh, but I'm saying no response. I'm actually going to say that I'm okay. You said this one You can't. Be I'm going to be okay with Phyrexian Revoker. Even though I know, and of course it names Mox Emerald, so it shuts me off one of my mana. And with Thorn of Amethyst, that's a bit of a problem. But that's okay, because we're going to move to the next turn. We have another land, and our opponent... Well, we'll see what happens, but uh, we're going to go... I've drawn a card. It's a Misty Rain for so I have yet another point. land. I have... Just a moment, please. So I still have Force of Will Ponder, and I can go Ponder, and I take a little bit of a risk if I Ponder here, uh, because I won't necessarily have a blue card for Force of Will, and even if I do have a blue card, if it's something like Progenitus, it's something that I need to pitch to Blazing Shell anyway, so I have to be especially careful, but I am indeed being especially careful. I am waiting because that fetch land there is going to be really nice with a Ponder. I can get a per well, perfect Ponder. Alright, please stop that, please. <laughs> Uh, so I, that way I can just take whichever card I like, shuffle the rest around with a fetch land, and we're back in business, or at least that's the hope. So I'm taking two here from Phyrexian Revoker, and there's Lodestone Golem. Now, Lodestone Golem is going to force me to pull the trigger here, because that is entirely too quick of a clock. So I'm going to, I don't even need to fetch here, I can just tap the Ink Moth Nexus, but, you know, nonetheless, I'm talking pretty quickly, aren't I? So there it is, Force of Will Pitch Ponder, we, uh, taking one. I, I, I think if I remember correctly, I forget to take one for a while here. So, but I, I do get around to it, don't worry. I, it says 18, I'm at 17. I do get around to it, don't worry. Uh, I think actually Colgate points it out, which it does matter. My life total does matter in this. Uh, and then there's a Wasteland, Wasteland hit Ink Moth, and Ink Moth is gone. So now I'm, now I'm in a bit of trouble. Uh, so we're going to fetch, go to 17, but actually 16. Don't worry, we get to it. Find a card, find an Underground Sea, which is alright, because even if they have another Wasteland, I have Underground Sea and Fetch Land in hand anyway, so I'm fine. Uh, it might bait out an extra Wasteland early, which helps protect future Ink Moth Nexi. Nexuses? Nexen? Alright. If you're tired, you can go to bed. I won't, I won't be, I won't be mad if you go to bed. I mean, I just need to lay my head down. Okay. Alright. Oh, yeah. And so, while this is going on, uh, let's see. So, taking two, so I'm at 14. Ignore You're what, ignore hard. your lying eyes, I'm at 14. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so there's another Phyrexian Revoker, and again, unfortunately, there's not much I can do about that, but Revoker only hits um, non-land, so it won't hit the Misty Rainforest like a Sorcerer's Spyglass or a Pithing Needle would. Uh, now, what do you think, if you're in the blind and you've already hit the Emerald, what are you going to name with Phyrexian Revoker? All other things being equal, if you don't know anything else about the deck, Black Lotus, right? It's the most powerful card in the game, and it happens to have an activated ability and is not a land. Well, that means it can be hit with a revoker, so indeed... Oh! Notes Mock Sapphire. It may not be this game, then. 
Uh, there's another game where it's Black Lotus is named in the blind, and it actually makes a difference. So I'm fetching here, and traveling on down, getting yet another underground sea, because of course, why not? So we can just have all of the underground seas. And unfortunately, I drew yet another fetch land. Now, I'm at this point debating, do I want to fetch or do I want to conserve my life total? And that actually matters. At this point, where there's when there's a clock on me, now, uh, it, I say that, it matters. I don't realize yet that it matters because I'm at 14. I'm actually at 13, remember, because I missed the, the one earlier. And we're about to note that really quickly. Well, if I fetch from 13, I go to 12. And that's a big deal, because when four power's coming at you, four plus four plus four is 12. Four plus four plus four plus four gets you above 13. So it actually cuts a, a turn off my clock if I fetch here. Do I do it for the deck thinning, knowing that I'm cutting myself off a turn? No, in all likelihood, the answer is no. Um, taking, yeah, so taking that. All right, fetching, going to nine but actually going to 8. Alright, I'm again, I'm pretty sure we're about to point it out. Let's see. Yeah, this is it at double speed. I'm actually not sure what's going on right now, what that deliberation was. It might have had something to do with Booger Butt over here. As you can imagine, when I'm actually, as Evangeline, T1 Stoneforge Mystic, as adorable as you are, when I'm actually playing a game, sometimes you can be like this, a little distracting. <laughs> okay, now this is janky. Check this out. So, this is this is really cool. Preordain. I have progenitus. Wait, wait, wait. Look. I have progenitus and... Oh, okay, Evangeline, I was trying to talk about that, and the moment kind of passed. I had progenitus and Force of Will on the top. So I have Blazing Shoal, but I don't have a creature, so I didn't keep the progenitus. And then, of course, the next card is Blighted Agent, because I live in an anime, and that's how anime works, I guess. So at this point, knowing that progenitus is the bottom card of my deck, I still have a Blazing Shoal. I just need to find something to use with it, and I have a turn to do it. Uh, it looks like it's two turns. Again, it's actually a turn. So, what are we gonna do? Well, I said this is an anime, and I kind of, I kind of framed it for you to know exactly what's going to happen. But I'm passing the turn over, and um, yeah, this is where Colgate, this is where Colgate notes you forgot to pay life for Force of Will, so you should be at eight. Uh, I thought that I caught it because when I did a Force of Will earlier, I did pay one. I just didn't do it for both Force of Wills. All right. <laughs> because you are being distracting. <laughs> I'm working here, Evangeline. I'm working. So I looked through chat to try to make sure. Missed one. Yeah, Colgate's not wrong. I just I misremembered thinking that I had done so. <laughs> I heard that. All right. Nope, nope. You're being too distracting. Nope, too distracting. Nope, too distracting. Too distracting. Get the toy back! Get the toy back! Let me go. Oh, oh, there we go. I want to be on your lap. Okay, well, try to be less distracting, please. I am actually working. So. I'm going to take four here, and that's going to put me at four. If I don't find the, the kill this next turn, I'm going to have to block and go to two. And that's a problem. That's a big problem. There's yet another wasteland, and it just hits an underground sea because why the heck not, I guess. That's, that's as good a reason as we're ever going to get. All right, so what do you think is going to be? Place your bet right now because it, it's at double speed. It's deconsultation. Now, Deconsultation is a really good card. Remember, I said I had Progenitus on the bottom of the deck, and Demonic Consultation says, name a card, exile the top six, and then keep going through cards in your deck until you hit one. Even if I hit all the other Progenitus in my top six cards, I know that I know that I know that I know that, that I know that the bottom card of the deck is Progenitus, so I am safe here. It doesn't matter how bad my luck is, I'm safe. So... <laughs> You know, I can just deconsultation for a hundred percent safety, 
And uh, yeah, there's a thorn there, but that's okay because I just pay two and Blazing Shoal I can pitch and not pay the mana. I'll still have to pay for Thorn, but I wouldn't otherwise pay, so I'll just end up paying one, which means I win. 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 How even though I was distracting I did you? Ju yeah, I did just explain it though. All right, so I have to make sure once I've done this, once I exile six, to definitely not mess this up. I'm gonna exile one until I hit a progenitus. And unfortunately, I didn't get the super anime, all three progenitus in the top six cards, because then I actually would go down to the bottom card of the deck. <laughs> you won on this one? All right. Yeah, we win. So this means once we win here, and we are going to win, it's shops. There's not a lot that they're going to do in response, especially main board. Sideboard, they can have dismember, but otherwise, no. Or dismember or warping whale or spatial control or whatever. Uh, but no, it's going to be this. It's going to be a win. So we're going 1-1, one, one, which is about what you expect. While I like the Karn matchup, going 1-1 one, one is more likely than going 2-0. Alright, so now that we're going to sideboards, we're going to see what they have. They have Dismember, so that's a given. Unfortunately, now some of these aren't really their sideboard. They're their wishboard, like Voltaic Key or Time Vault. Those definitely have to be... those can never come in. Uh, other than that, there's a bunch of weird stuff, like Sorcerer Spyglass, that they can have in there. Witchbane Orb, oddly enough. Uh, that's not something that you expect to see otherwise, so uh, we're going to be looking through here, seeing what we're... So obviously we're adding in three Hercules Recall, there's already one in the main, and there's now, you know, three in the side, so all four in. There's an Energy Flux, and there's a Null Rod. Those are the auto-includes. No matter what, those are definitely coming in. On the play, Damping Sphere can come in, because it hits Ancient Tomb, and it hits... Uh, Mishra's Workshop, and it makes Mock Spam on the first turn much, much harder to do. So, that being the case, you know, that that's the case. <laughs> so, uh, but Damping Sphere is kind of bad on the draw, unfortunately. There are some matchups where it doesn't matter play or draw, and those matchups are called Paradoxical Outcome and Storm. This is not one of those. It's just game one, or, I mean, uh, going on the player bust. Echoing Truth is also eh, maybe useful, but I haven't actually brought it in for this. This isn't the kind of matchup where it's all that useful. Now, if I come across Ensnaring Bridge, and yes, my opponent has an Ensnaring Bridge, then Echoing Truth is more useful, but even then, I have four Hercules recalls. It is a thing, but it's, it's kind of, in this matchup, it's like a bad Hercules recall that also hits Planeswalkers, but you're not using it for Karn. Like, no. Um, don't give your opponent value there. Again, we see an Ensnaring Bridge, and that's a problem. And I, you would think that this deck might also have one in the side that it can wish up. Which, you know, fair enough. Alright. I said I was gonna tickle you if you started singing. <laughs> so cards to take out. Now this is a little trickier. Mental misstep actually does something. This isn't a normal shops list where you hit Soul Ring and Mana Vault if that's in there, and that's it. This also hits three Voltaic Keys, one in the sideboard. Mm-hmm. And those are actual cards. Trey. Yes. Why do I have that kind of backpack? Because you like Pokemon. You're out. You got my eye. Please watch my eye. No, 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 no. That doesn't mean do it more. <laughs> All right. But other than that, finding cards to take out is a trick. So I, the way that I went about doing it, I kept in Force of Will because my opponent is on the play. And I would like to be able to counter what they're doing more readily. And the card disadvantage of Force of Will is somewhat negated by being on the draw. I'll get the card right back. So what I did is I took out cantrips. I took out preordains as you can see. Also, Gitaxian Probe is less good on the draw. It's better on the play when I can see what my opponent has and use that to determine how I play thereafter. So I ended up taking out two Mental Missteps, a Gitaxian Probe, and three Preordains for three Hercules Recall, Null Rod, Energy Flux, and a... No, 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 no. This is me on the, on the draw, so I didn't do Damping Sphere. So it ended up just being two Preordains then. So two are still in the deck. All right, so we see turn one, Voltaic Key, Mana Vault, Ancient Tomb. Oh my goodness, that is a lot of mana. That is three minus one, which is two, plus three is five. And we're gonna see two floating, because who even knows? 
Oh, okay, okay. So there's a Karn on turn one. Now, what do we do to turn one Karns, T1 Stoneforge Mystic? We do not let those things resolve. So I have a bit of a dilemma here. I have Force of Will blue card. Now, I have actually two blue cards. I have Progenitus and I have Hercules Recall. Now, one thing I could do is I could use Hercules Recall and just try to blow my opponent out. But to do that, I have to pitch the Progenitus here. So we're doing Force of Will and we're pitching Hercules Recall. Now, an interesting little bit about this is that since I have Progenitus, you're thinking, well, wait a minute, you have Ink Moth Nexus, so you go and get Blazing Shoal, right? And you're right, that is something I can do. There's another thing I can do, too. And that is, now I did just draw a blue source. So I had Black Lotus Ink Moth Nexus, where I could go turn one, make black off Black Lotus, detutor, and then play Null Rod. And whatever I detutor for, you know, I can just kind of have my way at this point. And the detutor, by the way, is, uh, is Blazing Shoal. It would have been Blazing Shoal in that scenario. If I didn't draw a blue land here, it didn't... Yes? Because any land turns into a win for me from there. Yes? Oh, no, no, there's a problem here, though, because I just got... My opponent played Chalice on zero after the Karn, which means that Black Lotus is off, so that plan is gone. So I'm going to have to slowly play it a bit. This is an Ink Moth first, and the Ink Moth can try to bait out a Wasteland or a Strip Mine. There's a Walking Ballista. Now, I can no longer counter that Walking Ballista, but I have Detutor. So, uh, there's two things here. One, I have Null Rod. Two, I have Detutor. So Null Rod is going to shut it down entirely. And this is going to turn into a long, slow, dragging game. I apologize, but on the other hand, you're welcome for it being at double speed. <laughs> you are very welcome for that. Because, spoiler alert, we're going to see Walking Blista hit for two a few times this game. Uh, but Ancient Tomb is good, Inventor's Fair is good, but Mana Vault, Voltaic Key, they don't do anything, and that Mana Vault is actually going to poke my opponent for one a turn because they can't pay the mana to untap it. Now, I did just get rid of a Hercules Recall, so that's going to stay there, actually. So at this point, I have the kill if I find a land. If I find a land. No, I don't. Actually, we're good here. <laughs> we're good here. <laughs> Never mind. We're done. <laughs> we're done. I'm asking for game four. Oh, no, 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 no! Oh, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. So I'm asking for game four, I'm animating, and I see, let's play this one out. You know what that means. It means the opponent found a dismember. <laughs> oh, no! Oh, no! Whatever will I do? All right, now, to be fair, if I find another land, I have D-Tutor. I mean, that's a thing. D-Tutor to find anything, like, get to choose my own adventure here. So I'm going to go to the next turn, and my opponent's going to swing for two. And I'm going to be saying that a bunch. That's what, that's just what's going to happen. So my opponent used the untap all command, it even untapped the vault, and they're tapping it back. So that's fine, my opponent's not cheating. We got there. Don't worry, folks. Alright. Not, not quite, not exactly. Alright. Alright, so there goes Blista hitting for two. I did it one time. You did it one time. I'm at 17 now, and there's yet another key because there's an academy, so I guess it's more mana. Uh, they're hellbent, so, you know, it is what it is. Alright, so we're absolutely going to preordain here. I said, come on, me. <laughs> Oh, I must be dealing with an Evangeline. I wonder how that happens. So pretty <laughs> we're going to look at the top two cards. All right, and I see a Ponder and a... Ooh, now I have Tinker in hand. Ooh, I see. Now, there's a there's a dilemma here. Blightsteel is definitely going on the bottom. The Ponder actually makes some sense to keep because if I Ponder and draw, I can use that to find more land. So even though I didn't draw a land, I didn't show Ponder to the bottom so that I could use it to find the land. Uh, the downside is that if I happen to have land land on top of the deck, then I would have been able to get a faster tinker. Now that I'm not under pressure, it looks like I'm okay though. That said, I am an idiot because I forgot my opponent is about to do Inventor's Fair, and what are they going to get with Inventor's Fair? Well, anything they'd like, but 
was it going to be? I think that the answer seems pretty clear, right? End of turn, Inventor's Fair, what card shuts down my whole deck when they're hellbent? It's Ensnaring Bridge. So Ensnaring Bridge seems yeah. like the easy... No, it's Lodestone Golem. That's right, because then their Walking Ballista couldn't attack. So never mind, it's going to be Lodestone Golem. Now, Lodestone Golem is a problem. Can we please? Can we, can we not? Can we, can we not? <coughs> no, never. Never, ever, ever. Alright, so hey. Lodestone Golem, does that Stella, resolve? Stop saying. Force of Will, a turn too late. And now I have a big problem. I have a big problem, folks, because this is not enough mana. Now that Lodestone Golem is taxing me, I can't actually cast the, the Ponder here. Alright, so I need to hurry. I need to hurry my clock up. That was funny, right? <laughs> Again. Alright, so we have a Mox Pearl that actually doesn't do anything. Alright, now, this is called a Chalice Check. If you're playing on MTGO, you can't do what I just did. It will just, it will remember the trigger for you. Uh, on, in paper, though, you can. So, here comes, uh, scooping and, and doing a new game. So, never mind, this is not the game where that happened. This is, I, I may have misremembered this for another one. I told you I was going to tickle you. So now that I'm going on the play, now the Damping Sphere gets to come in. And there's another thing that changes. I'm actually keeping my cantrips in and taking out my Force of Wills because I'm on the play. I did that. You did that. Now stop, please. Seriously, I'm working here. Please stop. You're, you're kicking the computer and something's going to break. Please don't do that, okay? I know I was tickling you, but I was tickling you to make you not make so much noise. Alright, here we go. Seriously, can you please take it seriously for a minute? I know you can't, but try. Alright. <laughs> no. Okay, then more tickles. I'm gonna turn her sideways when I tickle so that that can't happen. Alright, you gonna be serious? Okay, yes, you, you said yes. You said yes. So I'm taking out the uh, Force of Wills and bringing back in Preordains and Taxian Probe. So hopefully that's going to actually serve me better. Okay. It makes me faster if less reactive. Can Mental Misstep is still right out though. Can I, can I still play? Yes, just don't make as much noise, please. Mm -hmm. Alright, so there's my hand. No lands. That's an easy, easy shove. So then we have two lands and a Gitaxian Probe, Ancestral Recall, Hercules Recall. This is, it's a six card hand, but it's actually an eight card hand. And are you ready for some shenanigans, folks? Because here comes Shenanigans City. So I start off with a Gitaxian Probe. I told you I was going to tickle you. Now I see a Walking Ballista. I see a Walking Ballista there, as well as enough uh, an Staring Bridge. Dismember, Wasteland, Wasteland, Mana Crypt, Mox. This is almost a perfect hand against me. Why are you turning the other That said, other I go fetch for some deck thinning. AJ. And I get, since I You're see a Wasteland there. Release. That's right, I'm not. Since I see Wasteland, <laughs> it makes sense to go for Island here. Especially since I know that there's a Fetchland there. So, that's exactly what I get. So, Ancestral Recall. Why did you do that? I didn't, but I seriously, can't. you need to you need to be serious like you said you would. So I get a Black Lotus and a Mox Ruby. So we're going to go to town. Now we have a choice here. We can pass or we can try to do all the things. Now that's exactly what I'm going to do. We have a Brainstorm and we have a Preordain. Now we can't fetch, unfortunately, to, take the, to make it into a perfect Brainstorm, but we can Preordain Scry both to the bottom, which is kind of the next best thing. So we're going to do that. We're going to turn Black Lotus into blue, 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 brainstorm blue, blue, and draw three cards, put whichever two we don't like back. And there is some deliberation in this, as I recall. Uh, so it's Mox Emerald, land, land. Never mind, there is no deliberation in this. We, t we shove two lands. That's an easy out, easy pick. All right, so these both go, and then using blue floating, I... Look at the top two cards, shove both of them straight to the bottom of the deck. Now we ha uh, now I'm a little worried because I don't know yet whether we're going to make it. And it's a Damping Sphere. 
Amen and hallelujah. I still have a mana floating, but it doesn't matter because there that is. And I had to tap one, and we're done. We got to do all of the things. Officially, all of the things. Now, if it's this, if it's this rambunctious, if she's this rambunctious now, remember that I was doing this at half the speed earlier, so the video was twice as long, and I was trying to focus on the game while she was doing all this. So, you know, if you're a parent and you actually play with your kid doing this, mad respect. Which is a weird mad respect on myself. You know what I mean. Okay, so Wasteland, Box Emerald for free, but then the next thing that they do is going to have to be one mana, even if it's free. So they get a one mana mana crypt, and pass it on to me. Now they could have done... No, they couldn't have. Never mind. All right. Yeah, so they could have gone Wasteland, Mana Crypt, Turn 1, Walking Ballista. It would have cost one more, uh, but they could have actually done that. Not that it's all that necessary here. Uh, so, Hercules Recall Damping Sphere. Yeah, we have some hate. We have some hate. Uh, what do I feel like doing? All of the things. Now, there's Dismember, and that kind of messes with me a little bit. I would like to be able to go for Tinker. And it looks like that's what I'm going to have to do. It looks like I'm on the Tinker plan this game. So, uh, yeah, pass. And I can just do Mystical Tutor at the end of turn. Alright, so this is the Mana Crypt flip. Damage on heads, it's heads, so we're taking three. All this talking could use some coffee. Shoutouts to Sumatra. Do you hear that sound, Evangeline? It's raining outside. Oh, no, 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 no. You get those away from the keyboard, please. Pretty, pretty, please. Um, anywhere but. You can do them over here. I don't mind at all. Why? Because if it messes with the keyboard, it might mess with what we're doing for the recording. Oop. All right. X equals two on that walking ballista, and I end up being okay with it for a couple reasons. One, I have Hercules Recall. Two, end of turn fetch Mystical Tutor. It's not so much deck thinning when I'm stacking the top of my deck, but here it is. I'm stacking the deck with Mystical Tutor. Because of course I am. We're going to get some Tinker shenanigans here in just a minute. As soon as I can. Got to make sure I actually get the right card and don't go for show and tell. I think alphabetically they are next to each other in the deck, so, you know, as you do. Oh, and in response, Wasteland hitting Underground Sea. I'll live, play another Underground Sea, do it now, do it now, uh, I could actually have, not tap the Underground Sea, but tap the Island, but because I know they have another Wasteland in hand, this definitely keeps one mana up for me. So I ditch the Emerald, because Emerald does nothing in the deck, Ruby at least partially pays for Blazing Shell and pays for Blasphemous Act. So technically, it's the better one to have, all other things being equal. That said, I maybe should have dropped the Ruby because they have Emerald, and if they want to use Revoker to shut me off mana, then they would have to shut themselves off too. So, you know, that's it's probably better to do it that way. All right, but yeah, there's a there's a big hunkin' Iron Giant on the field. Shoutouts to the Iron Giant. And my opponent, just insult to injury, takes another three. Alright, so we're seeing six mana for an ensnaring bridge. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six for an ensnaring bridge. Now that looks like a problem, and it kind of is, uh, because if you notice how my opponent. Please give me a moment. I said I was gonna. I said I need. Okay. Uh, well, then stop singing, please. So they have Dismember in hand. If I Hercules Recall, bounce everything back, swing with Blightsteel Colossus. They will live because they can do Dismember. And then they can just not play Mana Crypt, so life total's not an issue, and play in Steering Bridge down the next turn. And then I'm in trouble. Then I'm in a bit of trouble. Oh, by the way, it wasn't six mana, it's, it's four mana, because uh, Mishra's Workshop only taps for one there, because of Damping Spear. So I got there eventually. So there's... Alright. There's Hercules Recall, target my opponent, and they're going to return all the things. They're about to get to the pearl. I shake the pearl because it took them a, a bit to remember it, and then they bring it back. Then I'm going to combat swinging, and my opponent pays the one for dismember. Alright, so there we go. Dismember, 
they're going to take only 6 here because it's 11. 11 minus 5 is 6. Sorry. Well, don't, don't sing, please. I'm trying to... Alright, All right, so going on, I play a land. I hold up. My opponent is going to play anything here. If they have a land, if they have a land, then they're safe. Because remember, shop only kept taps for one. So, wasteland, shop... A moxin won't do... No, no, mana crypt will do. That's right, because it makes two. Alright, and then they have to pay one extra for Damping Sphere. Three plus one is four. They have four. And then they're good. So I'm going to fetch here go to 15, and now it looks like I'm in a bit of a pickle. I have a few things that get me out, one of them being yet another Hercules Recall. I mean, I have three more in the deck. I also have uh, Energy Flux. Now there's a Vamp Tutor, and that's okay. I'd say that's okay. So Vamp Tutor for another Hercules Recall, and we're just gonna call it a day, I guess. I mean, it looks pretty good. It looks pretty good going into this. So my opponent is it heads and then tails. Uh, okay, they, they, they took it. Oh yeah, heads heads is damage. All right, so cool. So they, they must have done it twice. It's all right, it happens. All right, so the opponent plays an emerald. No one deflects the emerald splash. Uh, paying one for a mox pearl. Fair and balanced magic card there. All right, and then two. Uh, we're using the die roll function a lot for some reason. And then it's a Walking Blista on one. I'm going to Vamp Tutor. I don't know if that's in response or if I'm just doing it because I didn't type EOT or response or anything like that. But yeah, we're going to take two. We're going to find a card. My opponent knows what I'm going to get because they have my deck list and yeah. So we're going to get a Hercules Recall, put it on top of the deck. Not that we have to show them, but you know. Okay, okay. This is me uh, not knowing if putting it straight on the top of the deck is going to actually... Okay, so I shuffle first, then put it on top. Alright, move on to my turn, draw the Hercules Recall, play the Hercules Recall, win the Hercules game. And that'll do it. <laughs> Toted Out and Jigglypuff are wrestling. They're dancing. Oh, they're dancing, okay. That makes more sense. They're now they're wrestling. Alright, so going to sideboards, once again, since I'm going to be on the draw, I'm going to take out the Damping Sphere. It has done its job. It has absolutely done its job, and now it's going right out. And I'm thinking that I'm going back to the Force of Will side of the deck. Now my opponent, I, based on how little time that took, does not seem to be changing the sideboard uh, from uh, based on player draw in the way that I am. All right, so oh, never mind, never mind. We'll put one card from sideboard to deck and one card from deck to sideboard. So just one card, not too much. That's fair enough. Uh, I'm still going. I'm still debating over here. I'm still deciding. I'm still deciding over here. Yeehaw. Alright, so again, taking out Damping Sphere and debating how I want to do the rest of it. If I want to go the Forcible side or the Preordained side. And I'm, I'm thinking, now, if I, you know, Gedexian Probe is probably going to come out as well because, again, I'm on the draw here. Gedexian Probe is a little less useful when you already have some information about what the opponent has based on what they've already played. Uh, especially in a format like this where you're not casting a one one mana thing on turn one, you're casting 400 on turn one. You're casting like four. That's always fun. Always a good time. Welcome to Vintage. <laughs> good times. Where the least among you are the greatest in Vintage. And for some reason it cuts me out. I have no idea what just happened. So, um, yeah, I have refreshed the page, I think, and that's, I think, what's going on right now. And, uh, yeah. So, refresh. Again, this is going at double speed. My internet is not this fast. It's not this fast. Look how long this is taking. <laughs> My internet is horrible here. Absolutely atrocious, garbage, terrifically terrible. It's, it's, it's a hoot. It's a hoot what? nanny here. I see. You have your whole gang here. The whole theater troupe. 43 games, not a single one. Okay, here we go. So now we're looking through for mine. Trying to find mine. Where did mine go? Should be somewhere around there. Or maybe we had to rebuild the game. I'm not sure. Unfortunately, we may have had to. 
because I don't have a clue what just happened there, but, you know, that is, it is what it is. Also, shoutouts to N-I-E-S-K's Oathbreaker Virgin here, casual place. Fair enough, fair enough. So, making it again, uh, there's a timer if you're here on untap, and if you didn't believe me about it being double speed, look at that clock down there. Starting in, yeah, okay, so entering the game, hopefully Colgate will be here pretty soon. So I'm going to load up my deck again, because that's what you do. I'm going to have to go to sideboards. So, uh, yeah. going to have to do all that again. Yay! Good times! Great times for everyone! We get the five auto-includes again. The Hercules Recall, the Null Rod, the Energy Flux. And then we go from there. We're trying to figure out what we're taking out. And there's Colgate again. Shoutouts to Trinisphere. That is the Eye of Sauron. And the Sun. Alright. You still have glitter on you. You're never not going to have glitter at this rate. <laughs> it's alright. Alright, so taking out the mental missteps, taking out the preordains and the cataxian probe, we're going on the four forcible plan because, again, we're on the draw. Uh, so we're going to recoup the card that we pitched a force of will uh, with our draw step, and we really need to stop early plays that come out of the shop's deck. And I'm, of course, reminding Colgate, hey, sideboard, you may want to. Okay, so apparently Colgate did three cards for sideboard. And that's a lot of fun. Alright. Just slowly draw. Oh, there we go. <laughs> one, one, five. One, two, seven! <laughs> that's how counting works. I'm sorry, Colgate. I'm not meaning to pick on you. You're cool. Colgate's cool. Alright. So. Keep. And I don't type that quickly. Double speed, yay! Mulling, uh-oh. Now this is not what you want to see in game five. Now I see Blazing Shoal Progenitus Ink Moth Nexus. I'm happy. Not only that, I see a Fatal Push and for Walking Blista and a Hercules Recall for everything else, but there's a Strip Mine just to ruin my day. Effectively though, I have a six card hand because Blightsteel Colossus is not supposed to be there. Not at all. Uh, so we're seeing what the opponent's up to right off the bat. Because I see a strip mine there, uh, I mean, it's not great. Okay, cool, 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 ballista, cool. Go ballista, go, go ballista, go ballista, go. Okay, there we go. So I can do turn one. If I fetch for fatal push here to the underground sea, I'm going to open myself up to strip mine. But if I do that, then Ink Moth Nexus doesn't get stripped away. So in this case, it actually might end up being all right. Now. I, I tapped it and then untapped it because, well, why do I need to do that now? I can wait. I can let my opponent's plays decide what I'm going to do as I try to see around my toddler. You're not so much a toddler anymore. You're four. I, I think I think toddler ends, although you are actually kind of leaning more and more in my way. Alright, so there's a sphere. So in response to sphere, we're going to underground sea and fatal push. So kill it. Kill it with fire. I'm going to get pinged. I'm going to take one. That'll be all right. I think we'll live with that because it opens up Ink Moth Nexus and, you know, good old, good old Blighted Agent. T1 Blighted Agent over here. In Vintage, that's a thing. And we found another land. Uh, okay, so we can't detutor here. If my opponent doesn't use the strip mine, we're going to have Ink Moth into detutor uh, and then we'll be okay. We'll be safe. I am actually considering for the sideboard having something that I can do against all the strip mine wasteland effects in the format. Uh, it's unfortunate, I would very much like to have something, even if it's just as simple as a stifle, or more likely, the Teferi one that draws you a card. That would, that would be nice too. They are really punishing against a deck that only has eight creatures, and four of them are land creatures. Well, I say eight creatures. There's four Blighted Agent, four Ink Moth Nexus for the Infect kill. The non blight steel cl you know what I mean. <laughs> Alright, so they strip they took strip mine. I have an ink moth. If I can find one more land, we're good. Let's see how long this is gonna take, folks. <laughs> how long will it take for me to find one more land? Place your bets. It's my turn again, and I drew a show and tell. No, I drew a force of already a show and tell. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna pass. Because there's a sphere, and if I attack, then I can't use force. I can't do force of will. 
Alright, so there's an Adventures Fair. Cool. Back to my turn. Okay, well there's a Mox, there's a Sapphire. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try it, because I'm gonna have to discard anyway. I have not re I had not realized at this point, wait a minute, just let yourself discard so that you can discard Blightsteel, because, you know, that that is a thing. But on the other hand, Show and Tell is in my hand, and I can Show and Tell in Blightsteel Colossus. So, at this point, we are indeed gonna do Blightsteel. Now, discard into turn. There's a problem here. There is a problem. Okay, so, instead of shuffling just that, you would think I would shuffle just that. Okay, and that shuffled them in the graveyard. Uh, I hit the button to shuffle all of them to the bottom of my deck, and then I hit shuffle. That's not how Blightsteel works. That's how Emrakul works. Uh, Blightsteel only shuffles itself. Yeah, Colgate, thank you. Now, to be fair, and again, we don't have the video for it, but while that was happening, I was dealing with somebody being a tickly little booger for me. You were being a tickly little booger. <laughs> so I may have been a little bit distracted, but nonetheless, even so, I still should have remembered Blightsteel doesn't work the same way. The cards cards like Blightsteel and Emrakul have that line so that they give they have a little bit of reanimator protection. It's harder to reanimate a card like that um, because, well, it shuffles itself back in. A lot of reanimation effects, a lot of like modern modern reanimation effects are going to be at sorcery speed, and this is part of the reason why. There are exceptions, Goryeo's Vengeance, though that's modern the format, but not modern the game. Um, you're, you generally don't see instant speed reanimator effects unless they're going to cost a ton of mana, and this is part of why. Alright, cool. Shuffle, just did, thanks for catching. I had to reconstruct the graveyard. Thankfully I remembered we were able to piece together, together what it was. I knew that it, I knew the first three, and I knew a fetch land. I put Polluted Delta, my opponent, Colgate, reminded me it was Flooded Strand. So, we got there, we got there. Alright. So, yeah, no problem. Colgate and I, we're cool. It's, it's all good. It happens. It happens. Alright. And also, I think I have a reputation, not just on my channel, but even on Untap, for being the guy that gives take backsies. <laughs> Alright, so once again, Chalice Checked did not work. Hey, we might as well try it. Alright. Pinching my foot. Are you watching the game, Evangeline? Not a lot's happening right now, right? Huh. Not yet. You you wait. You wait and see. We're going to have a big turn coming up. Now again, all I need to find is a land. All I need to find is a land. Alright, so we obviously have to force, pit, uh, force something here. And we're going to force... Now, I could do a Hercules Recall or I could do the show and tell, or progenitus, but no, let's definitely not do that. And I do Hercules Recall because I'm at a state where I don't really need, I, at this point, I don't need the, uh, I don't need Hercules Recall. It's fine. Oh, so my opponent's saying, pay, pay that, will ya? Uh, and I did. I got around to it. I got around to it, so. It's, it's a formality. I knew that I had the mana, I just didn't actually go through the motion of tapping it. Alright, so there we go. And I did nothing, because once again, of course I didn't find the land. Um... Yeah, so we uh, we get to have all the fun. Now let's see, what do I draw? I think it's Progenitus for this turn. No, it's Blighted Agent. There we go, of course. Didn't play the Blighted Agent, couldn't play the Blighted Agent because, you know, didn't have a land. <laughs> Can you please scoot out of the way? You keep moving right into my way. Let me scoot you over here. No, no, no. Yes, yes, yes. You are right in my way. You're right in my vision. No. Where it's blocking the screen, honey. You can sit in my lap, but if you do, you can't also block the screen. Alright, so I'm having to force pitch Blighted Agent because it doesn't matter here. Unless there's another strip mine showing up. Because we definitely cannot let Karn resolve. That would be... that would be atrocious. That would be a nightmare. So let's untap. That would be a win for my opponent if it did. Um, because then they get key and vault and then they win. And that would not be fun. Alright, so once again, did not draw land, but I drew a second progenitus, which kind of matters. Finally! Thank goodness! Now, at this point, can I go for the kill? Yes. I can try, but if my opponent has dismembered, then I actually just lose, right? Not technically, but yeah, probably. I'd lose a land under a sphere, so what I'm doing instead is I'm going to detutor, and I'm detutoring for a land. It's going to be another Ink Moth Nexus. That will give me enough mana for show and tell, 
It'll give me, since I have two progenitus, I can show and tell and have the blazing shawl up. Blazing shawl progenitus. So I get to just have my cake and eat it too here. And if somehow it ends up not working out, I have Hercules Recall as well. So I have everything and then some. So I, I gave you all of that in part because this takes a while before I actually do it. But we're going to fetch. Uh, we're going to, yep. Knock ourselves down to 14. Get an underground seat. And I probably should have just, while I have this screen open, detutor because I'm going to have to look through my deck again anyway. Um, yeah, it, it works out. It, it's, that's the kind of convenience you would do in Paper Magic, but here it actually might matter for chat, because you see, is looking for a card in deck in chat, so it might actually make a difference. Um, oh my goodness, I am turning into the stage for all of the Pokémon. She has Cyndaquil, and Poplio, and Pikachu, and Jigglypuff, and Meowth, and Pampire, and Pansage, and Totodile. Only one that's missing is Chikorita. Alright. See, so yeah, I did all that, got an Ink Moth Nexus, as you do, as I said I would, because next turn, I'm going to ask the question I love to ask every single time I play this card. Uh, Shoutouts to Cedric Phillips, who I believe is the one that I first heard ask the question. And what is the question? You'll hear it in just a minute when we get to it. So my opponent is debating what they're doing. Taking them a sec, but they're getting there. They have Inventor's Fair with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 mana up in addition to the fair. So they can sack Inventor's Fair to go for something. I wonder what they would like to go for. It's Snaring Bridge. <laughs> now, Snaring Bridge would actually be kind of bad here because look at how many cards are in their hand. Uh, in Dismember is a card, but if they don't have Snaring Bridge Dismember, then they're in a bit of trouble. Alright. There's a Walking Ballista. And at this point, I'm probably okay with the Walking Ballista for two reasons. One, we have another win condition, and I'm checking my hotkeys. Cool. And two, we have Hercules Recall, so we're okay no matter what. Draw a card? Of course it's Force of Will. Alright, so one, two, three, it's actually four, for Show and Tell. I'm going to ask my opponent what they brought to class. What did you bring to class? No, I'm not. All right, we got there. Yeah, so I think it was Cedric Phillips that I saw or heard in an SCG Open, a Legacy Open, what did you bring to class? And my answer is apparently always, like, the Iron Giant but Phyrexian, or, you know, a Ten-Headed Hydra God thing, or the Flying Spaghetti Monster, you know, things like that. Perfectly fair and balanced things. <laughs> but you're the, an, you're the animal monster now. You're called the yeah. Pokemon. I am. The Pokemon Grizzle Daddy. I am a Pokemon Master. All my baby forms here. Well, Pikachu and Jigglypuff are actually not the baby forms. Not anymore. They haven't been since well before you were born. Alright, end of turn. Inventor's Fair. Going to find something. Anything. It's in Snaring Bridge, because of course it is. But you know what? We don't care, that's fine. We don't care. We don't care. Um, for a couple re- well, wow, for all of the reasons. In Snaring Bridge, I can just force of will, but you know what? That's not, that's fine. Now, could I just go for it? Yes, I could wait till end of turn, Hercules recall, and then just kill them. Uh, not kill them, I, I had to have to do progenitus, but no, I'm gonna do energy flux. This is more than I have to. It, if, if they have dismember, then progenitus plus ink moth with pitch, uh, with blazing shell pitch progenitus is not lethal. But that's a lot. <laughs> Alright, so in staring bridge is gonna, or not in staring bridge, energy flux is gonna work its magic here for a while. We can get our opponent to a state where they only have Ensnaring Bridge and Ancient Tomb because they don't have any other lands here. And when that happens, uh, they they will lose for a few reasons. They're going to have to pay life every turn and they're going to have too many cards eventually in hand, which they already do. You know, for Ink Moth Nexus, they already do. What's done there is done. And if they've paid the Ancient Tomb for Ensnaring Bridge, they cannot also pay for Dismember, so 
Yeah, the energy flux is, is being a jerk here. Very technical magic term. It's a real jerk. They're keeping up their two from Ancient Tomb, though, because they had extra mana. And why? Well, lo and behold, oh, there's a Black Lotus into Karn. And it also holds up Dismember for a turn, but not anymore. So I'm thinking, do I want to do anything about that? And I think that the answer is nah. Very technical magic term, nah. Let them get a card every turn. Alright, so they've given me two cards to, from which to pick, and I debate this for a little while. On the one hand, Mishra's Workshop can't actually be used to pay for the upkeep cost of Energy Flux, so it seems like that's an easy one to give them. But Sphere of Resistance also does nothing here, and Sphere of Resistance is something for which they would actually have to pay. You know, if you want to play the sphere, that's cool. You have to pay for it as well. So it seems even less useful, so I give them the sphere instead. Comes back around to my turn, and... Welcome to me being a jerk. Population me being a jerk. Alright. So, can I Hercules Recall here? Yes, I can. And it only costs two because no more sphere. What the only... Yeah? May I have a hug, please? Oh, they're all on Jigglypuff. Aww. Oh, <laughs> that was made my ab muscles have a hug. Can I have a hug? Aww, thank you. Kiss, please. One, two. Aww, thank you. Eskimo kiss. Okay, good. The king of this Pokemon. Oh, thank you. Is this my necklace or crown or something? That's your necklace. Okay, so we got there. I, I kind of told you what we were about to do, and that's what we did. So we ended up going Hercules Recall and Progenitus and just, you know. So Blazing was the kill, but the rest of Progenitus was just icing on the cake. They left the game, and we're saying good games now. So that's it, everybody. Uh, we do a little bit more talking, so let's do a bit of a recap here. So, Blazing Infect is awesome. Oh, let me, let, one, one more minute, please. One more minute, okay? Blazing Infect is awesome, and uh, you can wear it. And it has all of the answers all the time. No, I'm just, I'm just lucky. Sometimes I have an anime moment or two. Uh, things that I would do to change the deck. I did not know this season was going to be as Karn heavy as it was, so Nullrog would have come in the main in place of the Fatal Push. Uh, that said, there's already a Hercules Recall to kind of deal with artifact decks, and I really did want to have something to do with Lavinia, um, and a few other cards. Now, that being the case, uh, the Blazing combo itself is relatively intensive. It's a creature plus Blazing Shoal plus Progenitus or Blasphemous Act. Blasphemous Act is a little filler in the deck, you have to run Mystical Tutor to go and get it, and Mystical Tutor is not great in the format, but it's restricted for a reason, and I'm going to call it there. So that's it. Take care, Magic Community, and I will see you all later. Bye-bye! Bye-bye! Oh.